Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Well, I'm really excited to have on the channel today Thomas Sheedy, and I'm excited to have him on because I feel like last week was Christian week for me, and now we're going to talk about secular stuff because, listen, like, I, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people think that I'm an atheist. I'm not an atheist. I'm a deeply spiritual person. I have a personal connection with God. I just don't think that my spirituality or religion should take, t should have any place really when we're talking about political conversations. So these, these are separate conversations. And I think that it's very important to focus on values that we can all align on around individual liberties and personal freedoms and protecting the things that this country was founded on. And that's why I'm so excited to have Thomas on today because he is, you're the president of Atheists for Liberty, right? Yes, I am. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. It's 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 great to be here. Great to talk to you. And exactly, um, you know, no matter if you're an atheist or if you're a person of faith or you're spiritual or in between, as long as you hold common principles, common values that makes a nation a nation, that makes a good nation a good nation, it doesn't matter what we, we believe in supernatural wise, faith wise at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I know we were both at CPAC this year and we got to connect for a minute for like a handshake while you were running off to have interviews on Media Row. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I really liked about CPAC this year is at the very beginning of it, they welcomed everyone of every different belief system. So they welcomed, obviously, Christians, they welcomed Jews, and they even got a plug for atheists in there. Now, it was a little bit of a joke because they were like, kind of like, you know, saying like, you know, those fools that don't believe in the Bible, but at least you got a mention. So I was actually pretty happy with that. We not only got a mention, but this is our second year that Atheists for Liberty has been at CPAC and we've been on the CPAC planning committee. There were ten, there were lots and lots of atheists and agnostics and people who consider themselves secular and non-religious at CPAC fighting for uh, political ideals or fighting for uh, personal ideals that have nothing to do with the supernatural at all. Things that relate to conservatism itself and um, conservatism in my, in my mind, um, and we've seen this all throughout the past few years, has already been going in a secular direction. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that CPAC and Matchlap and Dan Schneider and the, and the ACU family have, have begun to understand more and more year by year that there are a lot of secular people too that are in the same conversation. And, and that's why we're proud to be at CPAC every single year. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's make sure we kind of start at the start. Atheist for Liberty. Tell me about the organization. So Atheists for Liberty, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We care about individual liberty, a free exchange of ideas. We support and defend the Constitution. We love religious freedom and we want to defend it. And we want to defend a secular government. Those are our five main principles. And our tagline overall is free speech, free thinking, and freedom for all. We are in the midst of this massive culture war where people's very freedoms are being challenged, where you have new religions that are popping up, religions like the religion of wokeness that is basically telling people that no matter what you say, you're an imperfect person, that no matter what you advocate for, you are in a horrible, racist, sexist, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic society. And this is a religion that has infiltrated every sector of our society. It's infiltrated our culture. It's now infiltrated the halls of Congress. The atheist movement was actually one of the first movements to become infiltrated by um, this movement. And atheist for liberty exists 50% of our energy is to combat that. And then we also want to fight for a secular government. We don't think that anybody, no matter of their faith, if they are Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, whatever, should be enforcing their religious beliefs on everybody else as policy. Um, I grew up in a Catholic family. I have no problem with religious people, no problem with Christians at all. Um, but simultaneously, we need to live in a republic that works for all of us. That's how our republic was designed, to bring together people of various different religious backgrounds and people of no faith at all to work together to create the best and greatest country in the history of the world. So that's why Atheist for Liberty exists. And we've existed for over a year now, and we're moving forward. So why why do you think the idea of atheists in the conservative movement, why does that make people so nervous? I think it makes people so nervous because a few decades ago, there was a political effort by certain activists to make the statement that in order to be a conservative, in order to have conservative values, in order to be on the political right, the American political right, that somehow you have to be a Christian or somehow you had to be a person of faith. And not only did you have to be a person of faith, but you needed to make sure that your faith turned into public policy. 
And I think that the creation of this moral majority in the 1980s going into the 1990s, I think it turned off a lot of normal center-right or conservative and liberty-minded people, people that are not even on the left, to not even get involved in conservatism for a very long time. And really, starting a few years ago with this whole anti-SJW, sort of anti-woke, anti-radical feminist movement that we have saw explode on the internet and now turn into what conservatism is now, is the conservative movement realizing that, whoa, I think we made a mistake several uh, you know, decades ago trying to look like what we're blaming the woke left or the regressive left for today. You know, this is an ongoing argument that I've actually had with a lot of conservatives because I remember very clearly my, my formative years were the 1990s, right? Like I, I was born in the early 80s, but I really I feel like I remember the 1990s. And what I remember is that I hated the Christian right. I mm -hmm. hated them. They were trying to intrude on all different. They were trying to dictate to me what music I could listen to, what art I could look at, what right. movies, TV shows. They were trying to mm -hmm. take. I, I perceive them to be really uh, uh, combating against free speech in this country, and they right. were one of the reasons that I frankly became a Democrat and never, ever, ever considered anything mm -hmm. other than that because I was like, the alternative to Democrat is Christian, and that is not not you know that's not for me now i want to I, I feel like i need to preface this for a second because i know exactly what's going to happen someone in the chat or someone in the comments later is going to be like carlin don't make broad generalizations about all christians well guys today we're going to be making generalizations if you don't feel like they apply to you don't get offended okay <laughs> like but but we have to speak in generalizations because we can't enumerate every single mm -hmm. different christian denomination right and but but that was my experience is i was constantly arguing with them and what what is what has happened um you know kind of since i left the left is every Everyone's telling me, Carlin, that wasn't the right. That was Tipper Gore. And I'm like, you are so full of it. Those were Christians. <laughs> what do you think? I, I overall concur. Um, well, I got my start in politics by getting involved in the new atheist movement. This was a movement that, that really permeated the 2000s going into even the mid-2010s. And it was a movement to speak out against, I guess, a sort of religious political correctness of um the idea that if you are not a extremely pious, extremely religious person, you can't be a good person. The idea that if you advocate for a separation of church and state, that you are a bad person. Uh, this was sort of a, a counterculture on the internet. New atheism was a counterculture on the internet that that made so many people stand up against sensitivity and stand up against people wanting to push their own personal views, their own feelings over facts. Um, and later on, that, that atheist movement actually ended up evolving into sort of this anti-woke movement that we now know of um, today. But I, I was in the exact same situation. Um, I was sort of a dino. I was a Democrat in name only. I'm not, I'm not sort of a, I'm not really a walk away, um, but I was a Democrat years ago because I was a single issue voter. Um, that even though I, I had right wing views or didn't really discover it until later on, had right wing views on a variety of other issues, because I am in favor of a separation between church and state domestically, it made me a Democrat. Because stereotypically, it's seen that, oh, the Democrats, they're the secular party. They're the separation between church and state party. Therefore, you have to be a Democrat. And that was me when I got involved in politics. Um, but I want that to change. I want that to change uh, very quickly because now the atheist movement is a ghost of its former self. The atheist movement was the first movement, even predating Gamergate, to get infiltrated by wokeism and social justice and radical feminism and all these, these horrible views that really just corrode our society. And we, we, we made a lot of progress in the atheist movement. We now actually have a congressional free thought caucus in Congress. You want to know the problem, though? There's a bit of a problem with that. I love that it exists, and, and I, I really hope that it does well in advocating for, for secularism and for religious freedom and for, and for people to, 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 to be rational, to think for themselves. The problem is, is, is that it's all filled with Democrats. So the problem is, is when you have a... a caucus that's all filled with democrats what are people going to think people are going to think automatically that oh in order to be an atheist you have to be a democrat in order to be an atheist and and not believe in the supernatural even if you hold conservative values you have to automatically be on the political left which is just not true it's not true at all um another reason why atheist for liberty exists we want to fight against a stereotype that you have to be in a particular box in order to be an atheist or in order to be agnostic or non-religious it's ridiculous Mm-hmm.
Well, I, I want to go back to what you what you said about you know this this predating Gamergate in a second, but you know mm -hmm. I think one of the perceptions I've I've seen from Christians is they think that if atheists are involved on on their side, then they're going to try to to deconvert all the Christians into <laughs> atheisms and convince them that there is no God. Is that your goal? That is not my goal. Not my goal at all. If someone wants to have a private conversation with me about religion and faith, they can. We can have that debate. We can have that discussion. I always, I always like uh, engaging in these types of discussions, especially with people who I agree on on so many other issues. But no, that is not our goal. That is not our purpose. In what remains of the atheist movement, it's sort of ghost, sort of a ghost of its former self, for lack of a better term. I am hated there. There are woke atheists that despise the existence of atheists for liberty and despise the many new atheists and people who really made the atheist movement great in the first place from not sticking up and not supporting and pandering to their social justice views. Um, we are their we are their enemies. So there are there are atheists that are completely against our missions and atheists that are even our enemies politically in this case. Um, now, uh, simultaneously, there are also theocratic religious people that simultaneously are against our efforts too. But no, our main goal is not to be convert. Our main goal is to is to fight and to win the culture war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's talk about let's talk about how you guys predated Gamergate in terms of the woke. I think that this is this is so interesting. It's something I hadn't thought of before you told this to me like 15 minutes ago. Tell me yeah. a little bit more about that. So um, back in the early 2010s, uh, there wasn't really a phenomenon, at least a public phenomenon of social justice warriors of these sort of radical feminists. You had liberals and you had conservatives. You had sort of a polite disagreement and an increasing amount of partisanship in politics predate, going back to the 90s, but never something that was so toxic and so insane on the internet and even on college campuses back then. It was just left v. right. Everyone thought of it as just that. And in 2011, something really interesting happened. This was around the time when new atheism as a civilizational phenomenon was sweeping the West and sweeping the United States. And at a uh, atheist conference in Ireland, an atheist Ireland conference in 2011, there was a feminist blogger named Rebecca Watson. Rebecca Watson uh, wrote, I believe, for a blog called Skeptic, and she was at this atheist conference and apparently it was a great conference. Her and a bunch of other people were hanging out at a hotel lobby till four in the morning. A lot of great conversations, I'm assuming about science and nerdy stuff and things like that. And Rebecca decided to retire to her hotel room for the night. She was followed in, in an elevator by a gentleman who liked her. And in a polite conversation, uh, the gentleman simply asked her, would you like to go back to my room for coffee? She said, no. He said, okay. He retired to his room when, when the elevator got to his floor and then she went back to her room, right? A civilized conversation. She wasn't interested in engaging in those sort of things with him. You think that's the end, right? You think, oh, okay, that just a, just a standard ask for sex, nothing really happened. No, apparently that random Irish guy, <laughs> Irish on, on, no, on St. Patrick's Day. Um, <laughs> that random Irish guy asking her for coffee um, in reality is just evidence of systemic sexism and systemic bigotry and later on systemic racism within the atheist community. And this was some new phenomenon that people on the internet and people in, 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 cult, in culture and popular media didn't really understand at the time. And what these people were able to do is people like Rebecca Watson and others were able to sort of assemble a coalition of infiltrators to infiltrate atheism, organized atheism throughout the West, all the various different organizations, and claim that there was sexism that was secretly at all these atheist conferences. Some of the most accepting conferences, and I guess liberal, for lack of a letter term, the most liberal and accepting conferences that you could think of. Apparently there was racism and sexism and harassment everywhere, which just wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. And what did many of these liberal, I would argue good liberal organizers do because again, we didn't know about the sort of radical feminism and wokeness back then. We took them in. We gave them positions of power. We said that, oh, they see the bigotry that we don't. Oh, they must be, they must be good people. They must be like the feminists and the civil rights activists of the 1960s and 1980s. And over a course of five years from 2011 to 2016, they ultimately killed the new atheist movement. And then a few years later, we started to see Gamergate come out. We started to then see the same ideology with various different activists use the same exact tactics to infiltrate every single movement, every single club that you could think of. And now it's even in the halls of Congress. Mm -hmm. And Elevator Gate was really the start of most of it. That's start of so it all, crazy. you could say. 
it, it it's just it boggles my mind how these people have done this and they've gotten away with it over and over and over and over again. What do you think yeah. drives that? I think I think it's people's fear of not being called racist, not being called sexist. I think when you have organizations in the atheist movement that that were that were so committed to looking liberal, that were so committed to looking open minded, when these activists came to their door and, and demanded that they fix this sexism, fix this racism. You don't want to be called racist. You don't want to be called sexist. And I think so many people, especially people who are just not literate in internet culture war stuff, so many different industries, companies in the public sector, private sector, we all bought it. We bought the lie. And that's why we're kind of on the losing end of this today. That's why we're seeing this ideology literally take control of everything just 10 years later. Yeah. It's nuts. You know it's striking to me. It's like, uh, you know, what you just said is, you know, essentially like you don't want to, you don't want to not be the open-minded people, right? You want to, if there are problems, you want to fix them. You want to know about them. And right. I think part of, you know, I, I, my perception of part of being an atheist is like you, you need people to have a little bit of an open mind to accept you because you guys are the minority, like culturally. Right. right? And so you, of course you guys want to be open-minded as well, but then the minute that these people come in and take over everything and ruin it, and then they go from, from, you know, organization or industry or culture or whatever, and do the same exact thing. What happens is, and I've, and I think we've really seen a lot of this since Donald Trump left office, the Christians lock it down. And they're like, we were right. We were always right. right. And there's like a, it's a backlash to what's going on um, again with the woke. Right. But it affects everything. And it affects people like you or atheists. It affects people like me who are very yeah. not Christian. Like, I think it affects all of us in different ways. Absolutely. And and now this is this is one thing that I think many of us in the conservative movement and in, and in this sort of anti SJW sphere have not kind of seen. We were so united. Uh, a year or two ago in fighting back against social justice and about wokeness and critical race theory and radical feminism and BLM and all this kind of stuff. And um, eventually, uh, because we didn't tackle certain topics, because we were kind of trying to stay in the middle of trying to look very, very religious, very, very religious, but oh, we're, we're the good guys. We care about free exchange of ideas. We're the, we're the true free speech warriors. It gave an opportunity for some very clever activists on the other extreme of the political spectrum to infiltrate us now and and state that we really aren't for the free exchange of ideas that if we were really for the free exchange of ideas we would we would love these people in advocating for theocracy and monarchy and wanting to infiltrate our events our conferences and give our people trouble we're seeing the exact same thing kind of happen it's one of the reasons another reason why it's so important for atheists for liberty to be present so we can have these conversations and talk about many of these elephants that are in the room um so our that our movement now doesn't get corroded and destroyed in the process Absolutely. Well, folks, if you're enjoying this conversation so far, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up to let YouTube know that they should be promoting it so we can get more people in here. I do want to take a super chat from Nathan. Nathan says, re atheists on the right. I think it comes more from the evangelical right who were slash are quite self-righteous at the best of times and quite paranoid of their would-be allies at the worst. Thoughts? What are your thoughts? Nathan is absolutely correct. There's a reason why in 2014, 15, and 16, we started to call the woke left the regressive left, because it sounds very similar to the term religious right. We started to see this sort of social justice woke left telling us what we can do, telling us what books we can read, what music we could listen to, right? Exactly what you stated about the religious right. It was just like this religious right who, who was telling you, few decades ago, who you can love, who you can marry, who, who what ideas you can have. Uh, it's, it's sort of the exact same thing. And now what you're starting to see is you have this woke left that has infiltrated our entire civilization, every single kind of club and organization that you could think of. And now you have this this new sort of radical right that is slowly brewing up mm -hmm. that wants to go after us from the other end. So we have to basically choose between two guns. Do we want radicalism on one end of the spectrum that destroys the United States, destroys our religious liberties and destroys our principles and destroys liberty? Or do we want a different bullet just with a different flavor? Mm -hmm. And that's sort of that's sort of the problem that we're in now. We we are we 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 have sort of fallen into this trap. Uh, and we have to kind of get out of it. And 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 Nathan, uh, you're you're kind of you're definitely correct there. 
it, it definitely originates, uh, at least when it comes to the religi religious right, uh, from, from what you were stating. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree. And I think, you know, this is one of the things that's very concerning to me because I was attracted to the MAGA movement. Like first I left the left and then I feel like I got attracted into the MAGA movement because once I left the left, I was able to look at it with a different set of eyes and really understand what it was about. And for right. me, that was about restoring individual liberties. And, you know, the First Amendment has always my entire life been my highest priority. I believe in people's ability to practice whatever religion they want to, as long as they're not hurting other people i don't really care do whatever yep. you want to do in church um i have freedom of speech freedom of assembly all those things and that was one of the things that really attracted me to this was that focus on individual liberties well after the election and the ensuing chaos around that when trump finally left mm -hmm. office i feel like there it started to brew up this you're absolutely right this this band of I, I've been calling them conservative religious warriors on the right, where they it, it's like regressing back to what was going on in the late 80s and the early 90s and mm -hmm. trying to, to force their religion on everyone again. And I am actually really worried that these people are going to come in and start dictating the direction of the MAGA movement because I right. think we can look at someone like Trump and say and and say pretty conclusively based on what I think you and I both witnessed at CPAC. He is the leader of the Republican Party. Whether the establishment yeah. likes it or not, Trump is the leader. Trump hmm. is not a religious person. Like no, no. definitely <laughs> not. I say I say this. I, I go on some some friendly uh, liberal atheist podcasts where where they kind of agree, they're kind of liberal but anti vocal. They're like Thomas, why are you going all the conservative things? Yeah. And I try to tell people, look, I'm not trying to endorse candidates here as a leader from five hundred one c three. But if you're talking about former President Trump, he's someone who's slept with a lot of women who's hung out with a lot of gay guys in New York City, who has been one of the most, ex in my view, when he was Donald Trump, the businessman in New York, was one of the most, uh, uh, what, what, what these, these radicals on the far, far right would now call degenerates. Um, but all of a sudden now they're, they're, they're trying to take his messaging and his branding of populism, uh, fighting back against an establishment or whatever, and they're adding in their personal theology with it, their personal goals. Now you have you have certain pages on Twitter advocating for literal monarchy now because they think that, oh, you know, it's not based enough that we have a constitutional republic. We need to abandon the Constitution. The Constitution is dumb. The Constitution is gay. We need to we need to uh, abolish that because it's just not cool enough. Let's go for the trend of just destroying our entire nation because it's cool. These people and, and these are some people in my generation, um, these they're victims of helicopter parenting, too. Just like these woke left people, the a lot. I'm a Zoomer. I was born in 1998, and these people are, are are literally the exact same thing, just a different flavor. They, they, yeah, they're, they're victims of helicopter parenting. They think that uh, they can be coddled and that they can enforce their views onto everyone else, and they don't really have a real understanding of what the country is about, and they don't have a real understanding of what liberty is about. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny and you're right. The, they are growing, they are taking control. Um, well, they're, they're not taking control, but they are growing and they're trying to take control. They're trying to actually infiltrate our organizations. Now they're trying to infiltrate heritage, turning point USA, young Americans for Liberty, young America's foundation, uh, ACU, you name it. They're trying to go in there, claim that they are true conservatives and then try to brush us out. Well, well, how radical are we? Do, we? do we believe that there are a million genders? Do we not believe in civilized conversation? Do we not believe in core principles? How radical are we that we need to apparently not be uh, in the conservative movement? Number one, when I'm more conservative now, when I hold the majority right wing views on various American policy objectives, apparently we're not uh, welcome at the table. And I, I, I want to also mention one other thing. I've been paying attention to this phenomenon since fall of 2019. Mm -hmm. I've been paying attention to it very closely, more than anyone else. I think I can, I think you can call me on our side, the expert on knowing what's going on with these people, because I definitely know what's going on with these people. And I am a, uh, not to fully dox everything about myself, uh, I'm, I'm finishing up my last semester at SUNY Albany, State University of New York, capital of New York State. And I remember when, when this sort of began, when these these radicals started going into the right and and sort of making fun of our sort of anti wokeness kind of thing and and stating huh, we're gonna we're gonna tear that stuff down, I remember telling some of my fellow college Republicans, telling uh, various people in my Turning Point USA chapter, look, I know you guys think that 
this this kind of stuff that you're seeing everywhere now that you're starting to see pop up it's not going to happen to our small little university in albany right and it did yeah it did it's it hitting happened. everywhere and I think one of the reasons that it's it's compelling for people is it's a very clear message. It has structure around it. I think people like really clear messages that they can wrap their heads around really mm -hmm. quickly. They know they know uh, who's on their team and who's not on their team. Whereas if you look at something like um, like the Ma like MAGA movement more broadly, which is about freedom and individual liberty, that's a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of possibility in there. Whereas if you're looking at something that's more restrictive, well, there's less possibility, but it's also much a much clearer message. And so right. I'm actually, I'm very, very concerned based on what I've seen, you know, in the last several weeks that they are going to swoop in and try to dominate the MAGA movement. And I think we saw this, I mean, even the, in this debate that I did last week and you watched that debate, I mean, these people exist and they have a yeah. lot of followers and they have more influence than people think. Definitely a lot more. And the thing that's very troubling about, about these people is that you don't really know who is who. These are people that are able to dress very well and claim to be normal conservatives or normal libertarians. And they can go to events like CPAC, they can go to events like the Turning Point USA Student Action Summit, and they can pose as people just like you and me. And you wouldn't even know it. And that's why it's so important that, that we get into these positions, that we help out these organizations in fighting back against these radicals. And it's a real shame, too. Yeah. Um, I, I actually kind of understand where some of these radicals are coming from, people that are in my age range. These are some of these people are people that grew up playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the PlayStation 2. They grew up watching SpongeBob when they got home from school and their mom made them chicken nuggets. These are people who play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the Xbox 360 and they're viewing their world, their nice world, be sort of corroded by fires in the streets, by protests gone amok. And wild, they're seeing their country get destroyed. But what are they doing? What are some of these people doing? Instead of clinging to the values that have actually made this country great and the Constitution, which is the greatest document in the history of the country, the, the document that has allowed our republic to prosper while so many other Western nations have fallen over centuries, they're clinging to radicalism. And I, and I get it. I'm a Gen Z kid too. I like immediate answers. I don't like bureaucracy and red tape. But simultaneously tearing down the very foundations of our country so you can have an epic moment online, that's not going to solve anything. And it's going to kill the very movements that are allowing our civilization to stay intact. Yeah. It's a very dangerous, very, very, very dangerous game. I, I completely agree with you. I feel like we've gotten off of, of people having principled positions and sticking to those principles and more so are gravitating towards whatever can get the most likes on Twitter or the most yeah. retweets. And I'm like... Oh my God, this is so incredible. It's just going to keep spiraling out of control. And that's why like, I've almost become blackpilled in the last couple of weeks. I'm like, the left went crazy and now the right. I, I think I tweeted this out the other day. Like, I feel like I'm watching everyone connected to politics on both sides descend into madness. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's true. It's true. It is descending into madness. Um, at the moment, I'll, I'll give some good news. The conservative movement is on our side. The liberty movements are on our side. At the moment, we it's going in the direction that we want it to go in, but we shouldn't rely on that. We shouldn't sit comfortably. Um, I, I want people to think about this. A lot of business owners that are in that are watching this stream, when you're running a business, you are competing against people that will stay up 25 hours a day, eight days a week to kick your ass. We have to have the same mindset. These radicals are working 25 hours a day, eight days a week to kick our ass and to throw us out and to take control of our arena of American politics and civilizational politics. We cannot let that happen. Just like we can't let the woke left control of all of our institutions and destroy our republic. It right. is so, things are so fragile right now. And if we don't have a real conversation and acknowledge that these enemies exist, we're going to be in deep trouble. I, I totally agree with you. And this was part of my thought process behind I became a Republican like a week and a half ago. And um, which for me is like not a big deal. It's a 10 minute trip down to town hall to fill out a form. But whatever, right. like it was something I've been thinking about for a while. And the reason, well, one of the many reasons I pulled that trigger was because I, I thought, you know, it, it's better to be involved in it and to have some sort of say and to try mm -hmm. to maintain things from within the party than to be an independent and be like looking in, in at the Republican Party and being like, mm -hmm. you guys are stupid. If you let these people take over, like you have to have skin in the game in order exactly. to, to have any say. And I feel so, so strongly that there needs to be that that the movement needs to be focused on a secular approach to all of this and not yes. give into this hysteria that's happening on the right. 
And our movement is going in a secular direction. It's going in a secular direction. This sort of, if we really are the people that are anti-woke, anti-SGW, we're the free thinkers. You know, they're taking a lot of language actually from the atheist movement 10 years ago. We're the free thinkers. We're the rationalists. We support a free exchange of ideas and religious freedom for everybody. Enlightenment values, enlightenment principles. Obviously, it comes to a secular conclusion. Even the radicals that are trying to infiltrate our movement from the far, 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 far radical right know this. They know that the various actors and various organizations that are on our side are going in a secular direction. And they know that it will benefit the United States of America, the constitutional republic, and they don't care because they want their own beliefs to, to be the law of the land, not the constitution, not religious liberty, but religious theocracy. And not even, I wouldn't even say religious theocracy, their own brand of religion. Any religious person that doesn't agree with their own view of the world, their own ideology, goodbye. Same thing that happened in the atheist movement. You're an atheist, but you don't agree with my brand of social justice feminism and uh, social justice atheist activism, you're gone. It's going to be the exact same thing. And I think Elijah Schaefer is a great guy. I loved him for having you and Blair White on. Um, and I, uh, I, I, I'm going to see him in a, in a few months at a conference. I'm going to definitely say hi to him and buy him a beer. But he's a great guy. He's, he's a great really guy. guy. Yeah. He's a fantastic guy, but he's also a businessman. Why did Elijah Schaefer have your two opponents on the show? Right. Oh, he knew it was going to get clicks. He knew it was going to get clicks. And why did he know it was going to get clicks? Because their movement, their infiltration is growing. That's why now you're seeing Blaze TV, the very sources that these radicals are actually attacking that, you know, these radicals are attacking things like Blaze TV and Daily Wire and people like us. So people that are own the SJWs because they think of us as kind of idiots in the middle. They're now getting attention. They're slowly getting attention and you're seeing the language slowly change. I, I pay attention to this stuff every single day. I've, I've paid attention to this infiltration since 2019 and the culture war for years and years and years. It's dangerous stuff. It's very dangerous stuff. Well, if it if it makes you feel any better, I was uh, looking at Elijah's Instagram a couple of days ago, and apparently his new puppy ate his Bible. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, there's some irony in that, and they were reprimanding the puppy for hating the word of God. <laughs> oh my God, that is funny. All right, let me look at some super chats here. Sergeant Hortle says, I voted Trump, but think an abortion ban is like the less open borders. When it actually happens, it creates a crisis. Women should, would go berserk with backlash towards Republicans, and they would be wrecked politically. I actually completely agree with that. I am, mm. am pro-choice, um, and I've made no bones about it, and I will not apologize for it. I am not. But I also think that the left has gone way off the cliff when it comes to abortion. Yeah. And I think, like, from my perspective on that issue, there there has to be some level of reasonable compromise between abortion after birth and no abortion at all. And if the right thinks they're going to win the argument by just outlawing everything in, in one fell swoop, I think that they're in just for a rude awakening. Overall, I agree with you. Uh, AFL also doesn't take a stance on abortion. We have pro-life members, pro-choice members. I think the I think the pro-abortion movement, in my own mind, has gone too far, definitely. Uh, but I have I have my own views on abortion. I'm doing a very nice um, what's it called? K. I'm doing a very nice uh, political maneuver uh, right here. But at least I admit that I'm doing my own political maneuvers, unlike the radicals. But I totally get where you're coming from. It's it's absolutely true. We have to be realistic at um, at, 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 at what we can win, what we can fight for. Well, I mean, and there's no reason why we should abandon our principles too. People think, oh, you accept the atheists and you accept the homosexuals and all of a sudden, it, by the way, this is a minority. These are the extremists that are infiltrating us, okay? This is not the conservative movement. They're saying, if you, infiltrate, if you let them in, we abandon our principles. What are we really conserving? You're conserving a lot of things, buddy. You're conserving a lot of things. I'm conserving a lot of things. I am I am really scared of our civilizational decline, and it affects me personally. My um, uh, my first day of daycare ever when I was three was September 11th, 2001. Wow. And on the exact same day, I live in New York State, by the way. I grew up on Long Island. My father was supposed to be on the 88th floor, 88th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center on September 11th, the exact same floor that was hit solid uh, by the first plane, uh, this, this was, you know, and he, he got a call a day earlier, uh, saying that his meeting was canceled and he's an early bird. He likes to get to work very early. So, um, 
the people that ended up killing 3,000 innocent Americans on 9-11 were people that wanted, that hated the fact that we had freedom, that we had religious liberty, that we hold values of the enlightenment that are contrary to feudal thinking and to people putting their own dogmas, their own belief systems over the freedoms of others in a free society. And what's funny, you have these exact same radicals that are infiltrating our, our movement now, stating comments like Islam is right about women. They hold a lot of very similar views. I see the exact same infiltrators as, as political enemies, sadly. You know, and I, I feel bad. I wish I wish they could join us in in this fight against against wokeness, but uh, they're not doing that. They see us as an enemy. Um, I see them as as a as a similar problem, just like the jihadists that killed three thousand people on nine eleven, and who nearly killed my father if he didn't get a call back earlier. Um, it affects me personally because I want as a as a zoomer, as someone who was born pretty much in the early twenty first century, two years prior, I want to see this republic last. I want to see the freest country in the history of, 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 of Earth, the freest country ever, exist far beyond my lifetime. And how are we going to do that? By holding to our values, by holding to the Constitution, by holding to religious liberty for all Americans of all faiths. Yep. And I, it's I, under attack right now. It it one hundred percent is, and I think that the that the people that are trying to push people like you and me out of the uh, out of the right into you know what what Lauren Witzke said is you know go register as a libertarian or whatever like this is the most short sighted thing in the world because you know Donald Trump brought in ten million more voters mm -hmm. to his side in twenty twenty than he had in twenty sixteen, and a lot of those voters look like me. A lot of those voters were coming from the left, were really disillusioned with what was going on. And if you're telling those 10 million plus people, go become a libertarian, well, guess what? The libertarians are always going to lose yeah. because they're libertarians. But then the right's going to lose as well. And the left are going to control everything for everything. everything. It's going to, it would be like the bull moose uh, 1912 election all over again, where you split the right up into various different camps. It's something that is incredibly dangerous because people like her want their own religious beliefs to dictate the land. They don't care. People like her. See, I'm going to watch my words here. People uh, like her <laughs> don't care that much about the enlightenment. They don't care. They don't care so much about actual religious liberty. They want their own belief systems to dictate the law of the land. It's very, very dangerous stuff. I don't want a woke social justice warrior or an Islamist to have the same control. Um, it is very, 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 very dangerous stuff that we are dealing with here. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right, let's take this super chat from Caleb. And Caleb, thank you for the other $10 super chat you sent in. The draw of social justice slash critical theory is that it lends social reinforcement to the low effort strategy of gaining superior moral status through slander. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've been afraid. We've caved in. Every single organization, every single club has been afraid to say, oh, I'm I'm against racism, but I'm also against this crazy ideology because mm -hmm. we're all afraid of our careers. We have we have families to feed. We, we have we have careers to maintain and why. And it's why it's so important for, for people to support your work to follow you on locals to support what we're doing because we are the people that are that are able to at least as you know a career to speak out against this kind of stuff yeah and i think we need to find people where where we can align around certain issues and then live and let live on the other issues because really that's very much so. at the end of the day like the constitution protects my right to live my life the way you want there is the, the way uh, your life to you, blah, 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 protects your your right to live <laughs> your life the way you want you know what i mean um right. like and that's what we should be protecting and you know i just you know we need to find common ground where we can like i i believe very strongly in god you don't that's cool mm -hmm. I don't yeah. care. I want you to be able to believe or not believe whatever you want, but we have to, to come together and fight these issues where we have a lot of common ground. Absolutely. The heads of CPAC are religious. That's not going to change. Charlie Kirk, the head of Turning Point USA, where we had a booth at their convention, he's an evangelical Christian. He's not the biggest fan of atheism at all, actually, on a personal level. Um, that doesn't mean that we should not exhibit at these events. That does not mean that we should not align with people of different theological views um, on various issues where we can agree on, on 80 to 90% of the overall civilizational content that we're trying to produce. Um, it's, it's, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer that we should live and let live on the most part. Um, it, it's what we're trying to do at Atheist for Liberty. We're trying to combine people of various different viewpoints together to maintain our society.
that's the most important thing at the end of the day with our principles intact. And once we defeat all this crazy nonsense, which let's be honest, it's not going to happen anytime in the foreseeable future. Like then we can, we can start bickering about the stuff that we disagree on. Yeah. But if we, if we focus on the bickering now, it, like none of these problems are going to get solved. Mm -hmm. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Not at all. And we're going to lose, you know, we talk about people, people state, Oh, this, this group getting uh what 900,000 people is, is insignificant. That's 900,000 people. We're talking about, well, log cabin, right? Log 900,000 people in 2021. Imagine what's going to happen by 2024. Log cabin just had a huge sort of upgrade in terms of their infrastructure and how they're going to run as an organization. Imagine them in a few years. Look at what I told you about the atheist movement. When the atheist movement was healthy and successful, the built up of it led to the creation of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. Imagine what would happen if it became a politically diverse and nonpartisan caucus. Imagine the amount of power and voting potential we have there. Non-religious Americans, atheists, agnostics, people who call themselves secular non-religious, we're the fastest growing religious demographic in the country. That's why it's so important for politicians, various different advocacy groups, and political parties to pay attention to this growth and to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. if you lose that largest demographic to one end of the political spectrum, it's going to be very hard to win in the future. Yep. Yep. And I, and I fear that like, I, I, I pray, <laughs> I'm not even one to pray, but like I am praying in this particular regard that there will be a red wave in 2022. I think it's very hmm. likely there'll be a red wave in 2022, but the only thing that's going to prevent that from happening is frankly, if the right continues to bicker amongst itself, while the left continues to coalesce, even when they don't like each other, like the progressives and the moderate Democrats do not like each other. They do not right. agree on, on frankly, like more issues than I would disagree with like a Christian on, on the right. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're at least coalescing and voting in the same way. If the right keeps this bickering up, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Yep. They're in trouble then. And yep. that's why we can't, that's why as someone who is personally invested in the right, I don't want that to happen. I don't want this division to occur. Not at all. And that's why I really want us to be in charge of this debate. You know, we've been so afraid, this movement has been so afraid over the last few years about speaking out against these infiltrators, these radicals. And we got to stop doing that. We have to acknowledge that that there is division that is that is trying to happen, division that's trying to progress within our own ranks, and we have to stop it and stop it now. And I think because we didn't want to come off as uh, religiously intolerant or anti-Christian, it gave these infiltrators the perfect ammunition they need to now get the proper spotlight to take the fight against you and I. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we have one more super chat here for the moment. Go Art Bazaar says, this might piss people off. We never do that here on my channel. Come on, Go Art Bazaar. Um, but I always thought the religious right are SJWs and caused the rise of the dangerous left to grow. I completely agree. Every single Absolutely. thing, every, everything has an equal and opposite reaction. Life is about balance. When something goes too extreme on one end, it will be balanced out by something on the other end. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's the whole, remember there was the whole fear of when you and I were Democrats, the idea of, Oh, we don't want to, we're Democrats. We're not, we're not Christians. We're not, we're not people that are highly religious. We're not what people say the right is. Uh, we are, we are the, the good guys. We're the good forward thinking people. And I think it, 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 the radical left was able to grow because of this this fear of normal people not wanting to look like the religious right mm -hmm. and it it, it it enabled it enabled the gop in my opinion for so many years to lose on so many important uh different issues i don't want the right to make that same mistake again i agree so how were you received at cpac this year this year we were received very very well uh we received well as well in 2020 but this year we were received very well we were on the cpac planning committee so we were able to to help out cpac with with planning its events and recommending speakers and recommending a lot of people a lot of people that are actually uh that actually were at cpac and even some speakers that were at cpac people that are involved are people who are atheists actually people who are involved in the atheist movement so we we had some connections that we were able to talk to about helping out um with cpacs and we're going to be welcomed more and more year by year um the only flack that we got was online we got flack from the social justice activists on the far left and we got flack from the infiltrators and the monarchists and the theocrats who were trying to destroy the conservative movement that's the only flack that we got among normal people normal people who understand that freedom of speech freedom of expression um diversity of thought 
is important. We're loved by all the normal people. And that's going to continue to stay the same way. And this is this is one of the things I don't understand, because one of the things that attracted me over to the right was the fact that they they are the big tent. They were welcoming of different ideas and different opinions. And even when I started getting involved in it a little over a year ago at this point, they were like, Carla, we don't care if we disagree on these issues because we right. agree over here. And maybe yep. it was because like it was just like I was like the new shiny and they were courting it. It felt like they were like welcoming yeah. me and they said, We don't care if we disagree. Exactly. Like, all of a sudden that principle got thrown out the window. <laughs> yep. Yep. Exactly. Oh, you know, this whole thing about fighting back against social justice activists and radical feminists, that's so like 2019. That's so like 2018. Now we have to talk about whether or not like monarchy is cool. Like, cause that's like the real based argument that we should have. No, you're going to kill the country. If you do that, you're going to kill the country. You're going to throw out half of your base of supporters. And yes, even people who live in Kansas and Nebraska, this isn't a rhino thing. This isn't a beltway thing. Normal people of various different viewpoints are going to get turned off by this nonsense and this division. And it's a very dangerous game to play. And it's true. If we really are the good guys, we're, we're the real free speech advocates. We're the real people that, that want to talk to people and agree to disagree and, and fight for common values and all this kind of stuff that we've been saying for the past few years. We have to show it. We have to show it. They have to, this side has to reciprocate for us. And, and I, I am someone who, who will gladly speak up against the woke left all day and all night. They don't like me. Where am I supposed to go? Democratic Party, or the well, we have Democrat members too, but this is personally my own view. Where am I personally supposed to go? The, the left, back to the left, or to the Libertarian Party? Okay, uh, I, I hold some Libertarian views, okay, but uh, there are some views that I hold that are conservative as well, that are that are conservative and actually not as Libertarian. You know, am I, am I not welcome in here because what? I don't believe in a supernatural creator of the universe that we can't really prove on a factual level and where we've engaged in debates about it for thousands of years and might not even find out about as well in our lifetimes. Are we really going to disregard so many different people that, that just disagree on this one little tiny thing but agree on 90 to 95 percent of everything else? Like, really? Are we going to be that childish about this? Like, come on. It's so dangerous. It's a dangerous game that we're playing. I don't care if being against wokeism and being in favor of diversity of thought is so 2019, so 2017, so IDW. It's yeah. still correct. Just because uh, it, it, I say this, I say this to atheists who pretend to call themselves Christians when they're not. And, and actually, in my view, it, that's disrespectful to Christians in my in my perspective. By stating that atheism is so 2012 and 2011, even though you you are an atheist and you think that atheism is correct. You're lying. You're lying to people and you're lying to people of faith. You're lying to people of faith that way. Saying that something is so 2012 or 2017 doesn't mean that it's not true anymore. Facts, no matter what year we started to learn of them, they transcend years. They transcend trends. And and it's this sort of game of, of going by the trends, going by the clicks. All right, accepting Carlin because like it was so important for the election. All right, thanks, Carlin. You did your job. Walk away. Woohoo. Bye bye. If we get if if we abandon all the infrastructure that we created over the last few years to really make the right this more accepting place, we're gonna be in a lot of deep trouble. We're not gonna win, we're gonna lose. And it's going to affect this country for decades to come. It's very dangerous when we want meme moments on the internet because we think monarchy is cool or throwing out diversity of thought in the constitution is cool. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. Because there's nothing to be cool about when we don't have a country anymore. No, and it's 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 been really disillusioning to be honest to to all of a sudden see all of these people on the right just throw their principles away or throw throw what they said was their principle six months ago. It wasn't no. that I, I know it seems like another lifetime now, but like it really <laughs> wasn't that long ago that we were actually all getting along and that yeah. we were aligned and that there weren't these problems and there wasn't this infighting. And it's just, mm. it's really, it, it's, it, I think it's really hard. Um, You know, I've talked to a lot of people who, who are, who are out there in the space, like, like you and I are, and it's like, it, it's exhausting after a while to have to contend with this. I feel like I've gotten, mm more pushback from the right lately than I have from the left by a long shot. Yeah. And that and that's why it's so important to stick to your guns and to stick to your principles. Because if you're a normal person that cares about your values, you're going to make enemies from various different extremes. Mm -hmm. And we have to acknowledge that those extremes exist. We've tried ignoring these infiltrators for what, a year and a half now? Hasn't worked. We have to tackle this problem head on. And I oh, hope that discussions like this are the start of it.
I, absolutely, and you'll be pleased to know I just put an infiltrator in the chat in time out because they're causing problems. Um, all right, <laughs> Jenny's getting inky with it. it. Says the overly religious seem to be cutting off their nose to spite their face. Need to get their religion out of politics or lose their religion. I totally agree with that. I think like th these are the people that should be defend. Well, okay, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Like, so so one of the arguments I hear about the First Amendment all the time, and literally the very first thing in the First Amendment talks about how you know Congress shall not establish a religion, right? Like yes. we like we have freedom of religion in this country. The argument that I always get is, well, Carlin, they meant Christianity. I'm like, no, they didn't. Like no, they didn't. They it, it, it's like it's it, it drives me crazy it's like it's like they're they're always like we're constitutional literalists we follow the letter of the of the exactly. law exactly except for this one line that is the first line in the very first amendment and, and that's my problem this is my problem this is this is what another thing that certain people on the right need to need to understand i understand that the word separation of church and state looks like a left-leaning term just like when when you're you know if you're a democrat and you look at the term religious liberty it looks so right-wing um, but these terms do have meanings too. A separation of church and state actually is a good thing. And it's something that, in my opinion, conservatives as people who, who claim to know the constitution, to know federalism, to, to really have an understanding of separation of powers and of the law should also have an understanding of separation between church and state. Mm -hmm. um, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's the establishment clause and the free exercise clause of the United States constitution that's our separation of church and state that's our separation between church and state right there and every single person who calls himself a conservative and calls himself an advocate of religious liberty and an advocate of free thought and reason and individualism and all this kind of stuff should back up that establishment clause yep 100 percent and that's it the shouldn't look like some radical atheist or radical left wing no. thing. it's and a normal the thing that's in our constitution and that's the principled position to take to say to say that you know th this is a, this is an idea that we're going to protect because we know it, it protects our right to practice our religion just as much as it does yours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh all right, I want to get another super chat in here. Um, crazy princess, I have spoken to my employer about critical race theory. I am being told it's my opinion that it is dangerous and will create more division in the workplace. They will not take it down. It, it is not, and it, this actually goes to to the First Amendment as well, because yes. critical race theory training in the workplace is compelled speech, and compelled speech is unconstitutional. Yes, and like I tell uh, plenty of atheists, it's religion. It's a dogmatic religion. Yes. that is popping up and I'll say, I'll get, I'll actually give one bone to traditional religions. Mm -hmm. And that bone I'm going to give is usually in the, in the three monotheistic religions, there is something as forgiveness In wokeness. There isn't, there is no wokeness at all. And that's why it is such a dangerous religion. It is an enemy of reason and it will permeate your industry. It will stop your speech and it will do whatever it can to foster absolute control until everybody that the ideology or the religion deems as imperfect is destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's I, I'm very sorry to see what, you know, the contents of that super chat, because it's something that millions of Americans are now facing every day. It, it absolutely is. And so, I mean, let me ask you this, because this is this is one of the things I'm trying to figure out lately. What is it about wokeness that is 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 like a literal mind virus that takes over people and creates like it's like i've called it invasion of the body snatchers because that's what yeah. it feels like you have a normal human being one day and they are gone the next what do you think it is i think it has to do again with the with the idea that you're a forward-thinking person and if you're a forward-thinking person you must hold this view no matter what you must acknowledge whatever prejudices you have inside you even if you think those prejudices are right and you need to follow you need to blindly follow this belief system until so you fall off the cliff because it's your duty to fail and for the ideology to win. Mm -hmm. It's why so many people who were even advocates of wokeness years ago are people who now regret it. Uh, one of the one of the earliest advocates of atheism plus this is by the way the the woke infiltration of atheism. It was called atheism plus. Uh, that's a lot, a lot of people recognize it as that. One of its main architects, Richard Carrier, Dr. Richard Carrier. He originally loved the idea of atheism plus it looked like great progressivism and diversity for people. And then it went for him. It went for him and it went for his reputation. It went for his livelihood. And he started to see the negative effects of it. And I think sadly, a lot of these former friends of ours, a lot of these people that we consider to be good people, but people that are infected with this mind virus 
a lot of them are not going to be joining us until they are personally affected by this too. We, we, uh, you, people like you and me, we debate these people all the time on Twitter and Facebook, and we lose them as friends minute by minute. And they're not going to be rejoining us until, sadly, the ideology comes for them too. The religion comes for them too. Oh, it's so true. I, I've said to, you know, my, some of my older, old friends over and over again, like, you know, as soon as you realize that I'm right about this, you are, well, I won't even hold it against you forever. Right. I won't, I promise not to throw it in your face. Because we could have been in the same position. We could have been infected and brainwashed just as easily. Very easily. All right. Uh, Re Reve Resco. Now, I'm going to thank you first for the nice big super chat. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I feel like there's a buck coming with that. But as a Christian, I will not bend from my principles. I don't care what you are, but the moment you tell me I have to change to make you feel comfortable, it's not going to work. You want to change the very thing that made this country what it is. So again, I thank you for the nice big super chat, but now I've got your money. So I'm going to, I'm going to say what I think about this is that, you know, every time, you know, I have no issue with you being a Christian and practicing whatever you want to do in your church. That is you, that is your place mm -hmm. to, to follow your spirituality. But when you're trying to force your religion on people like me, and I don't want to speak for Thomas, but I'm going to say people like him. You are forcing us into situations where where we are we are we are being made to feel uncomfortable by the fact that we don't adhere to your religious values. Yeah. And so the the only way around this is to protect freedom for all of us to practice whatever faith we have or or don't have, and to live our lives the way we want to. What do you think? I I also want to add on. You know, I'm not trying to compromise your principles or your beliefs. I'll state a few things that are actually, uh, that, that this person might agree with. The United States still has a majority Christian population. Half of the founding fathers, or even more than half of the founding fathers, while some of them were deists, a good chunk of them were also Christians who were deep people of faith. Uh, in terms of population, you could make the argument that we are a Christian country in that perspective. That's a perspective that I understand. I grew up in a Catholic Christian household. I am one of the very few atheists in my family. I have respect for people regardless of what belief systems they hold, whatever they believe when, in when it comes to the supernatural. I still respect people and love people and care for people. Um, I don't want you to compromise your beliefs at all. And I know we might be coming off as woke or, as, or leftist when we state that we're uncomfortable, but I, I think a lot of people also fall for this trap. If someone says that they're uncomfortable, that doesn't always mean that it's wokeness at play or that it's too much sensitivity at play too. We're following the exact same doctrine that the founding fathers held when establishing our republic. We are advocates of religious liberty. We, I am not a Christian, you are not a Christian, you're a spiritual person, I'm not spiritual at all, but I'm still an American. And I still believe in, in plenty, all of the values that made this country great in the first place. I just don't believe that uh, a supernatural god created the universe at least i don't know i don't see any evidence to show that so i'm an atheist that's it and in many respects to whoever you are who, who gave that 50 uh, 50 super chat first off i want to say thank you for giving that super chat but hopefully in that respect to provide some clarity and to show that there's really not much of a difference between you and i yeah and i think that i i don't want to speak for you but i do think that both you and i would argue that he has the right to practice his religion and that we absolutely want to protect his right to practice that religion the state atheism of the Soviet Union and the state atheism of communist China and the state atheism of North Korea is a religion in and of itself. Because while they have abandoned traditional religions, they have propped up the religions of praising the eternal leader until you die. Uh, they don't like freedom of speech or expression. I'm not a fan of anybody forcing their beliefs or lack of a beliefs upon other people. It's why actually... Um, I'm, I'm in New York State. I think a few months ago there was a Supreme Court case that came out, a Supreme Court ruling that came out that allowed churches to remain open during the COVID pandemic mm -hmm. because the authority of the state is separate from the authority of the church. They are two separate entities. I don't want uh, uh, theocracy. I don't want monarchy. I don't want people's individual religious beliefs to dictate the law of a secular country. Simultaneously, I also don't want that secular government to impede upon the rights of the church. What's going on in the church is of the church. What's happening in the state is of the state. Two separate entities for a free and prosperous people, a free and prosperous, religiously and politically diverse people. Absolutely. America. 
And and when I felt the same way about that, I was completely in favor of the churches being able to do whatever the churches wanted to do, not yeah. because I was going to go down the street and go to church, but because that the Constitution protects them. Exactly. Um, and, and this is what we want at the end of the day. We want freedom. We don't want monarchy. We don't want authority. We don't want uh, we don't want Loki coming in and, and attacking our party in Germany, telling us all to kneel. And that's what we really want. No, we want liberty. From a, partis uh, from a partisan political perspective, from a Republican perspective, why is the right so excited about Gavin Newsom, governor of California, potentially being recalled, or my governor, Andrew Cuomo, potentially being impeached or forced to resign? Why is that the case? Why is that the case, particularly in 2020, 2021, and not in other years? Because, of course, Republicans would have been against the Democrats any year. Because for a year, we have had our freedoms, on the most part, taken away. We've had them curtailed. We yearn for freedom. That is what America is all about. That is what I, as an American, want. And I don't believe in the same religion that you do. I don't go to the same church that you do. I'm being hypothetical in this sense. Um, but I will still defend your right to believe in what you want to believe and to pray to whoever you want to pray freely. Because if you don't have that right, then my rights are going to be taken away too in the greatest country in the history of the world, our constitutional foundations of that country will cease to exist mm -hmm. and will affect all of us, atheists and theists alike. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to say something that might be uh, controversial, and I, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but, you know, I said this uh, in a video, I think a couple weeks ago, where I, I wish just once, just once, a Christian would defend my right to practice my spirituality and my faith in the mm -hmm. way that I see fit, because there are there. The reality is that there are elements that like there are ceremonies and things that I do as part of my spirituality that are actually regulated by the government in this country. Like I like right. they're extremely hard to do. I have to get on a plane to go do them. Sometimes I have to, it's, it's just easier to leave the country entirely and go to like Peru or something. And, right. and that's because that's like the government is actually regulating parts of my faith. And just one time I would really love for a Christian who most likely can go down the street and go to church to stand up and say, you know what? You should be able to do what you want in this country. This shouldn't be like this. Like the church, the state shouldn't be interfering in your right to practice your spirituality and the yeah. way that you see fit. And it just never happens. It, it, I think, I think the vast majority of Christians in the conservative movement would agree with us. The problem is, is that I think that because of the legacy of the moral majority, and I, this is just my own personal view. This is with respect to the many organizations and people who we're working with and people who we will be working with. So please take this with a grain of salt. Uh, please take this with a level of understanding. Um, there was this whole, uh, one thing I loved about this whole anti-SJW movement is that we can be in the sort of agree to disagree category. But there were some people who were still uncomfortable with the idea of atheists being in the mix, atheists being in the picture. It's one of the reasons why it's so important for Atheists for Liberty to exist um, and why this why this organization should exist and why we should be keep doing what we're doing. Because it is a bit of hypocrisy to state that, oh, you know, we have we have we have black people here, we have gay people here, we care about diversity of thought, but having an atheist organization or having a guy with a atheist scarlet A there. And it's still not politically feasible for us to do this in 2017, 18. So we're going to smile. We're going to say that what you're doing is interesting. We're going to say that what you're doing is interesting. And then we're going to go away. <laughs> and then we're going to say goodbye. This is a minority. This is not the majority. You know, we are being welcomed in many places. But there is, I will say this, there is a little bit of a remnant of that. And what these infiltrators are doing the radical monarchist theocrat infiltrators from the far, far, far right, they're taking advantage of what things used to be decades ago and that little shadow, and they're weaponizing on that shadow against you and against me. That's what's happening. And that's why I think in many ways, while we are the, the real good guys, the real free speech warriors, you kind of feel like you're still not getting as much respect as you should be. Nice. I feel the same way. I understand what, what you're going through. And I understand probably what plenty of people in your audience are going through. That is very, very true. 
but there are more of us out there than we might than we might think. Um, MCK says religious slash worldviews at best meditative and compassionate, at worst a self esteem circle jerk that promotes aggression. I wonder which one wokeness would be. <laughs> I have thoughts about that. <laughs> I think oh, it's boy. clear for most of us, right? Yeah, I'll let you answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I think they're having a little circle jerk. If I'm yeah. if I'm offering an opinion, Barry on says I would untie with or I, I would excuse me I would unite with anybody to do right and with nobody to do wrong frederick Douglass. you're here barry i good like that super quote. chat thank you good quote i think we've got one more super chat here that i want to get in because it's uh it's 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 our our 50 our big spender again and again thank you for the super chat again i don't care what you are i don't don't believe in forcing my beliefs on others ever but the moment i hear we need more of this all i hear is quotas this is what the left does and I think that I can, this is a good point. This is what the right's reacting a, to a lot of times. I, I concur. I concur, especially to, what, um, you know, we talk a good game in many cases about the individual and supporting individual rights is what Atheist for Liberty is about, what many other organizations and activists are about. But simultaneously, I'm also talking about groups. I'm also talking about atheists. I'm talking about how we should have atheists be more accepted. And you're talking about how the LGBT community should still be more accepted, right? One could make an argument against us. Aren't we a little bit hypocritical? I would argue no, because we're not denying the existence of groups. We're stating that the individual and what they hold, what individuals hold is different from the skin color that you have, the genitalia that you have, what pigment you got, or anything like that. But I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, this is why, too, uh, I, I, there, there are things, if, if there were certain woke elements of the woke left that tried to infiltrate the right and call itself conservatism, I'd be, I'd be against that. I'd be against the conservative movement embracing 500 different genders. I would be against that. I would not be a fan of that. But we also have to draw a line and we have to make a distinction. Is Carlin and Thomas Sheedy the same as the people who, who say that there are 500 genders and that critical race theory is awesome? Is the person who defends Western civilization and loves the enlightenment values of Western civilization, you know, in a post 9-11 world, someone who was nearly affected by 9-11, someone who agrees with conservatives on so many important civilization aspects, someone who has voted Republican. Am I the same or is Carolyn the same as those people? No, no. So we have, we, we, we can have the conversation of what we need to preserve, where to draw the line, what principles that we should really uphold. Well, simultaneously, not being strategically stupid. It is a numbers game. It, the radicals that are infiltrating our movement from the far, far right, they know this. It is a demographics game. We're not disagreeing with them. It is a demographics game. So let's get more of the demographics involved in the game while not abandoning our principles at the same time. I think we can do both. I think we can too. I certainly hope we can. Um, I just want to say to Black Magic in the chat, send me an email through my website, dude. Send me an email through my website. Okay. Um, so, so Thomas, what is what are what is Atheists for Liberty up to today? What do you guys have planned? So we got our start over a year ago at CPAC 2020. We are going to conferences across the country, trying to build our brand, trying to get more supporters to show that you can be an atheist and hold great views and great opinions and hold to many core principles and beliefs that so many other Americans do. Um, we're also engaging in a lot of online programs. In fact, for anybody who doesn't have any St. Patrick's uh, day party to go to or any event to go to atheist for liberty is actually doing an event tonight in our afl discord server at 9 p.m eastern standard time for those that are watching in the live chat at least today on as of march 17th you can sign up and become a member for ten dollars a year ten dollars a year five dollars a year for students very cheap prices at atheistforliberty.org so we want to i, I think we should i think if this com when this conversation ends, I think there needs to be a few things that are acknowledged here for people in the audience to understand. Number one, we need to acknowledge that our enemies exist, that these enemies that are infiltrating the right exist. We've tried for a year and a half to ignore them and play the game of, oh, these people don't exist. Let's just fight the woke left. That doesn't work. We're winning. The majority of the conservative movement is on our side. Yes, we are winning. I'm not trying to state that that everything is all doom and gloom and that the theocrats are coming for all of us. No, we are winning, but we do need to pay attention to these people. Let's pretend, let's stop pretending that they don't exist. Number two, we need to unite on various different values and principles that we agree on. Number three, this is just a personal thing. And I think, I think, uh, and I think it's very important that this happens for all the atheists and agnostics and secularists that watch Carlin's show and who like me, come join us at Atheists for Liberty. Sign up for $10 a year. 
or five dollars a year for students you'll get a link and an email after you sign up with a discord link to our discord server and our members only facebook group you'll get to join us for game nights trivia various different speaking events online sadly due to the pandemic a lot of in-person events that we were planning on holding are just not happening still but we are growing as an organization we need you to be involved in the debate we need you to be involved in the discussion we need you in the fight to help us out it is a numbers game and then for those that are religious allies of ours who might not fully agree with with uh atheism but simultaneously fight for the same principles go join all these other organizations and help them out you should take their spots and not the theocrat and monarchist infiltrators. You guys should be the people in charge of the conservative movement and not them. Mm -hmm. And also another thing, support people like Carlin on Locals. Support her work. She's doing a lot of great stuff. I've been a fan of her work for the past year. I, I pay attention to the culture war. I pay attention to everything that goes on and happens. We all need to be engaged. We all need to stay engaged in the fight. If you like me, you like what I'm doing. I, uh, I provide Carlin with a few links to my social media. In the description i got a youtube channel i got a personal twitter i got a facebook you might be wondering why so few followers it's my fault i've been playing games for too long and focusing a little too much on college when i'm <laughs> learning that i uh i can't talk about nuclear weapons in a foreign policy setting because i'm a cis straight white man but i'm gonna get there i'm gonna uh, come out with videos soon so please pay attention to me and support atheist for liberty support us follow us on social media and become a member come play trivia with us tonight if you can and support us and support carlin's work Thank, well, thank you for that. And I just want to say that all of Thomas's links are in the description below. So you guys have easy access to them. Make sure you join everything. Follow him on everything. I, I love what he's doing. Um, so I want to ask you this. So um, so the, the log cabin Republicans, right? They have yeah. a thing that like you can join them as an ally. So I can join the log cabin Republicans as an ally. And as we know, like I, I flock to gay men like uh, yep. like a moth to a flame. And so <laughs> and so I'm I'm there. Can we do that with atheists for liberty? The same well? can happen at Atheists for Liberty. We do not discriminate. Okay. We love debates. We love various exchanges of ideas and people with various other different opinions and viewpoints coming into our organization. As long as we stick together, there's no infiltration, there's no destruction, internal destruction. We all fight on the same team here to keep our country safe, to, to fight for liberty then let's work together. Come join us at Atheist for Liberty. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm going to go and join Atheist for Liberty after this chat. I didn't know if I was allowed, but that's okay. Now I know I am. You are. We, we, just, we actually just changed the rules five minutes ago just for you. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. I am a special and unique snowflake after all. Um, all right. Rachel says, Carlin, you are a treasure. I'm so thankful you came over to our side. I've never been inspired. Like, this is making me blush reading this, Rachel. Um, but I greatly, I greatly appreciate the sentiment. And I do hope we get to meet someday. Um, is there anything else we need to? Well, you guys are going to the Better Discourse Conference. In we are. We're a sponsor of the Better Discourse Conference. We were a sponsor yeah. last year. It's a great event put on by the team in Myth and Form. They're actually they actually used to do atheist conferences, and like oh. I told you, the atheist movement died. Myth and Form used to be an atheist organization that died off, and then they decided to get involved, rightfully so, in the new culture war, the fight against wokeism that's infecting our society, and they provide great events, great conferences. They have a lot of great speakers. Someone like a Dr. Carlin, you know, who comes every year and speaks, uh, you know, and, and chats and hangs out. Um, we're going to be at Better Discourse. We're going to be at Freedom Fest as well. That's a more libertarian event, libertarian CPAC, Liberty Con. We're going to be at all the conservative events as well later on in the year. So, so talk to us, contact us, check us out. We're going to be here for the long haul fighting for the exact same principles that we all share and let's get involved together. Is Freedom Fest the thing in New Hampshire? It was a thing in Las Vegas, Nevada for many years, uh, but they just switched it to South Dakota because of okay. COVID regulations. Okay. The libertarians are trying to get me to come to something in New Hampshire and I forget the name of it, but I, I think there is like some sort of festival in the New England state, some outside event yeah. that they have every year. I remember I hearing yes, something about this, so maybe that's what they Yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing. All, all <laughs> Maybe the libertarians moved to New Hampshire to like they're doing like this free state project thing. So there's a very high concentration of them here. Um, right. So we'll see. Maybe I'll end up at that event. Rachel wants to know. Uh, reminder: Where she, can she find the Discord link? You can find it by becoming a member. Once we get an email notification that you signed up as a member on atheistforliberty.org, we will email you today with the Discord link and with the members link. If you have Facebook, we have a members group as well. 
Um, it's invite only for paid members. If you're a student, it's $5 a year. If you're not a student, it's $10 a year. If you want to give more, you can too. We're a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization. We're really trying to educate people and to fight for principles that we share. And if you want to support us, you want to become part of our community, especially since we're going to be doing a lot of online events, come join us. Come hang out with us tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. Excellent. And Emo, sa Emo Muzz says, uh, Liberty Forum put on by the Free State Project. I think that's, that's it. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one with those crazy libertarians. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Thomas, I really enjoyed having you on the channel today. I think this was an awesome chat, and I, I really appreciated getting to know more about what you're doing. I just want to encourage everyone, if you're thinking about going to the Better Discourse Conference, I had a great time at it last year. Sadly, I won't be at it next month because I had a different commitment that I was doing on that weekend. Um, but I strongly encourage everyone to go. It's just a really great time. Come Any say closing? hi to me. Yeah, come say hi to him. Um, any closing thoughts? This was a fantastic discussion. I was waiting for this all week, and it's a discussion that needs to be had more and more. You can count on me, and you can count on the AFL team and the tens of millions of Americans and atheists who support our common cause to join us in this exact same fight. This, this conversation cannot go away. And I understand, guys, that certain things are trendy that certain conversations might look stale, that talking about religion 10 years ago, we're talking about social justice warriors from two to three to five years ago, might not be as exciting, but we still have a republic to protect. We have principles that we need to stand for. We have a constitution that's the greatest governing document in the history of this country. And there are extremes, both far left and far right, that want to destroy it and make our lives hell. Like I told you all earlier in this podcast, there are people working 25 hours a day, eight days a week to kick our ass. Not from a business perspective. I watch a lot of entrepreneurs that state that from a business perspective, but from a political, ideological, and cultural perspective, they want us destroyed. And we need to fight to make sure that we have a say in this movement and that our movement ultimately wins at the end of the day. Yeah, I agree. And I think people need to see this is escalating. It's escalating quickly. And um, we need to stick together. The left sticks together. And this is why they continue to win every single time. And mm -hmm. like this infighting that's going on, this saying certain people are allowed on the right and certain people are not allowed on the right. It has to stop. And to we end. need to push those people. Like, uh, you know, yeah. I don't have I don't have a problem with them being in like it's a big tent movement. You have to allow people to have different opinions. I do have a problem when they're trying to push other people out of the tent and yeah that's the line for me it's a losing game for them it's a losing game for them. the left is gaining more numbers we are losing numbers if we if we do this we're going to lose more and we cannot do that we have to keep fighting we have to keep expanding we have to be people that stand for our principles and not just abandon them when it's when it's trendy or when a different year or something different in the culture war happens we need to we need to fight for what we believe and we need to fight together and that's what atheist for liberty is all about Absolutely. Well, thank you again for coming on today. I hope everyone who believes in the First Amendment and conserving that goes and signs up for Atheists for Liberty. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch and you're welcome to come back anytime you like. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us today. Now, the next live stream is actually going to be tomorrow on this channel we got a couple of them this week it's going to be with christian watson who has been hanging out in the chat if you have not yet met christian you need to meet christian he's a good guy and we are going to be talking about the future of the MAGA movement and just having an open discussion about that and so I'll look forward to tomorrow uh thank you for spending some time with us and we'll see you soon <laughs>